So where we were at the end of our last video, about 425 million years ago, the world was a very different place, although it was becoming more like the world that we see today. But actually, um, as far as we're aware from the fossil record, there were no animals on land. That's probably not true. That's probably just a bias in fossilization. But what we do know is that around this time, we were looking at really, really small um, plants that could have um, not supported a particularly complex animal ecosystem. So we're now sitting here in the base of the Silurian, and you may never have thought about it, but it may surprise you to know that once animals do appear on land, at least in terms of the ones that we can see in the fossil record, those animals were not vertebrates. Vertebrates were actually relatively latecomers into life on land. Rather, what we see are arthropods. So we've met this group several times before, but the arthropods as a whole um, have a number of pre-adaptations towards life on land, such as the exoskeleton that I mentioned back when I was talking about adaptations. And as a result, there are actually numerous arthropod groups that have come onto land independently. So let's have a look at those in the order they came onto land, or at least the order they appear in the fossil record. So the earliest evidence that we have for animal life on land comes in the form of trace fossils or trackways um, and we can see that these appear in the late Ordovician, based on this graph shown on the left here, taken again from this Kenrick 2012 paper. And on the basis of those trackways, we think that the earliest organisms, the earliest animals, sorry, moving around on land were probably millipede-like organisms. So the earliest land animals um, where we have, of which we have fossils, um, appear just after the Cooksonia fossils. A few years ago, I would have been talking about the millipedes that are shown here um, as the earliest land animals. These are some fossils from a place called Stonehaven in Scotland. So these are fossils which have uh, spiracles. These are the apparatus by which millipedes breathe on land. You can see them labeled somewhere here, SP right there. And so these were, for a long time, our earliest land animals. But those rocks were re-aged just this year, actually. And we are, they are now younger than we think they, or than we used to think they were. Instead, our earliest land animal is either a member of the scorpions. I haven't put those on this slide because there is quite a lot of debate amongst people that work on these fossils about whether early scor scorpions were genuinely um, land dwellers or whether they were aquatic because um, we're fairly sure that some were aquatic. So in terms of our earliest land animals, that makes life more difficult. So at the moment, our earliest um, piece of evidence for fossil life on land is this thing um, that looks a bit like a burnt core flake. Here's a reconstruction here. And this is a member of a group called the Trignotarbid arachnids. So these are creatures that have been, um, have been found in macerates from uh, priddly age rocks in Shropshire. You can see the priddly here on this time, um, on this scale. So we're talking about just after, or just between 419 and 416 million years of age. And we know that these are land-based organisms because we have some um, just slightly younger fossils that shows this entire group was very clearly a land-based organism. And indeed, uh, we know that they were land-based predators. Um, so that's really interesting, actually, that the first um, arthropods that we have on land were predators. They were definitely eating something, but we don't know what. Indeed, they're fairly highly nested. They're quite derived arachnids. So the ancestors of all arachnids were probably on life, sorry, were probably on land for quite a bit earlier than the 419 million year old date on these rocks would have us believe. So in fact, not only are myriapods and, uh, and arachnids uh, the first land animals, not vertebrates, but three major arthropod clades, so groups of arthropods moved onto land by the Devonian, which is about the time that the um, vertebrates originated. Um, so these groups that have terrestrialized independently are the myriapods, that's millipedes and centipedes and their kin, the insects, those are actually highly derived crustaceans here, and the arach arachnids, which are land-based chelicerates. So this tree shows the relationship of the arthropods as we currently understand it. And resolving this tree has actually been massively challenging 
because all of these three groups that I've pointed out have quite a complex suite of adaptation or specializations to living life on land and indeed many of the problems in arthropod phylogeny. Um, so understanding the relationships between these the, the different groups of arthropods can be traced back to the fact that there is convergent evolution in those three groupings based on their ecology. And I've mentioned some of those adaptations in video number two of, of this lecture. So how complete is our picture of early animal life on land? Well, evidence of complex life on land is relatively patchly, patchy shortly after its origins, and that's because it's driven by Lagerstätte effects. So these sites of exceptional preservation. We have a number of these for early life on land that provide really unique insights into what these ecosystems were like, but they are very, very sporadic. We've got like a, just a smattering of these over a really important period during the terrestrialization of plants and arthropods. A really nice example of this is the Rhiney Chert. This is a 411 million year old silicon dioxide uh, rock that represents a hydrothermal spring deposit. You can think of the kind of environment that we may associate with Yellowstone National Park in the USA, shown in the top left today here, where we have a number of, well, in fact, we have an entire terrestrial ecosystem um, that has been reconstructed in the bottom right here, where we had hot hydrothermal springs inundating this ecosystem and encasing it in the silicon dioxide rock really um, very, very quickly, we think. Um, and so we've got evidence of a number of plants and indeed arthropods in pretty much cellular detail. So you can see an example of some plants and some plant cells, in fact, on the bottom left here. And here's an early member of that group called the Trignotarbids. The plants give us um, a really, really valuable insight into early plant-fungi interactions. So plants and fungi have a very close relationship today, especially plant rooting systems, that seems to have formed fairly early on within uh, terrestrial life on land, certainly by the time that Rhiney was around. And there are seven different genera of terrestrial macro plants that have been described from the Rhiney chat. Of those, five are considered to be true vascular plants. Well, there's also, interestingly, evidence of lichens in this deposit, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. There were also numerous arthropod groups. So all uh, major groups um, of terrestrial arthropods seem to have been around by this time period. We know of centipedes from this deposit. We know of hexapods, and there is a possible insect as well from this group. The hexapods is kind of the, the broader group that also includes the insects. And there were also chelicerates, such as the arachnid, the trinotarbid on the top right that I just mentioned. I will link in the bonus materials um, at the bottom of this page to a cross section, uh, a thin section of uh, some of the fossils from this deposit, because I think it's really, really cool if you want to check those out. The Wiley Church sits at the beginning of the Devonian period, and as we move through the Devonian period, the fossil record of plants gets much more complete. We start getting hundreds of known sites globally, and the plants that are in those sites uh, begin to get more diverse. A good example of a, um, a Devonian fossil plant site um, dates from 380 million years ago and is um, situated in Gilboa in New York State in the US. This is the famous Gilboa fossil forest. This demonstrates that the tree habit, so the form of a tree, had formed by this time. This has evolved convergently actually a number of times in different plant groups, which I'll mention more on the next slide. Um, but on the right hand side, here you can see a single rooting horizon in a quarry in New York State, and it shows the complexity of this early fossil forest. On the left, you can see just an example of a single tree from Gilboa. So that kind of um, forest ecosystem, early forest um, ecosystem, had evolved by 380 million years ago. As I've mentioned, by the middle Devonian, so by this point, we had trees. And that evolves in several major plant clades, so, and it evolves convergently. And we think this is because the evolution of a robust vascular system allowed the tree habit to form, it allowed woody tissue to form, and then there was an evolutionary pressure to reach greater heights to allow access to more sunlight for photosynthesis amongst plants and to facilitate better spore distribution. 
And this is important, not just because trees form forests and for forests are important global habitats, but also because of the impact that forests and plant roots more generally have on the geology of the earth. So plant rooting systems uh, and their evolution have fundamentally changed the earth's sedimentary cycles. Before rooting systems evolved, flooding essentially wasn't a thing. Floodplain features, as shown on this diagram on the left-hand side here, all of these are different floodplain features, and those only start appearing in the rock record in the Devonian. Before this point, as shown here, sediments tended towards being sandstone, so quite coarse-grained in nature, and rivers, as shown on the right-hand side here, were universally braided. Once rooting systems evolve, which bind together the soil better, um, there is a move towards mudstones being a, a, a slightly more prevalent form of sedimentary rock, and meandering rivers first appear in the rock record. This is a fundamental change to sedimentary environments on Earth that then has um, interacted with the evolution of life. So I think that's a really, really cool example of how life can actually change geology. So that's neat. And in our next video, we'll be moving on to vertebrates and how vertebrates moved onto land. So I'll see you there in just a second.